roses. If we didn't have to prune them, who would? I mean, the flowers are at stake. That's why we grow roses, for those big, gorgeous flowers. What if you prune it wrong? You're not gonna get the flowers, right? Or are you? And then there's the thorns. What do you do? I have a great solution. I have Joanne Vieira from the Tower Hill Botanic Garden is gonna let me prune her rose. I get to do the work, but if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter because it's not my shrub. And at the end, I know what to do to mine. So let's figure out how to do it. Joanne, I'm afraid of pruning my rose because I don't want to hurt the flowers and I don't want to get stabbed with thorns. I don't want to be a bloody mess when I get out of this thing. I would probably just come in with the head shears and just give it like a nice shaping and turn it into a nice round shrub, right? Well, you, you could do that, uh, but you're gonna wind up with a blob there that's not gonna, I think, give you the best expression of what this plant ought to look like, this sort of nice arching form. This is reaching out into the path. It's gonna catch us as we go by, so I would start right there, make those cuts first. And I'm actually gonna try to make sure you're not just a complete bloody pulp when you come out of there by just asking you to put on some safety glasses to at least protect your eyes. Okay, I'll get these out of the path. Oh, you're gonna to have to go a little further than that to keep it off the path. I would just take this all the way right back to the base because it's gonna to continue to grow out over the season this year. I gotta get all the way in there? All the way in there. Okay. This is a great time to have a pruning partner to pull these things out so they don't land on your head, but also to help you identify which branch you need to cut. So does everything need to be taken back to the base? Because I don't want to get back in there. It's more thorny in there than it is out here. Actually, no, that's a good point. You really don't have to go all the way to back to the base with, with all of them. If you're going to make a cut partway into a branch, though, you want to make sure that you're cutting back to a logical point where the growth is going to come outward and not back towards the center of the shrub. So I can cut this one back to here because this will get it off the path, and then this growth will just be coming up, right? Well. Yeah, but if you think about how much growth you're going to see over the course of the season, that's going to put you right back into the path again if you get a foot and a half or two feet of growth. So you want to think long term, a little longer term, and go back a little further into the plant. Okay. So if I come back to here... That's a better choice, and this one is more upright and will be up and out of our faces. Okay, so how close do I get to this? Usually you try to stay about a quarter of an inch away from the, what you're preserving. Beautiful. I know I should cut out dead wood. This, is, this piece is obviously dead and I can cut back that. But what about this? This is old and gray, uh, but it still seems to have a lot of growth coming off of it. Right, it's still, it's still actively growing, but we want to keep this, um, this shrub young and active and healthy in its juvenile form. So I tend to go in and take a third of the older wood out of there. So a third of the stems focusing on the older wood. Joanne, we've removed a huge mess of, of canes. My jacket has been pierced countless times by thorns, and I think I'm bleeding in several places. Uh, are, we, are we done? You know, I think we are. We've done, we've probably taken out a third or more, and we usually use that rule of not removing more than a third of the growth just to make sure that we leave a vital, healthy plant there. So I, I say we're done. Can I keep the glasses? Because I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty nice. Yeah. Okay. 